Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to have a look at another brewery that I've never tried anything from before. And this is yet another beer that I brought back with me from my recent travels around the place. So, as I told you in previous videos, we went to Blekinge, then to Kalmar and then to Uland. After that though, we went across to Gothenburg, but we did manage to stop off in Jönköping for a couple of hours. And when I was there, I managed to get into Seistenbolaga and pick up a few local beers. So this one comes to to you from the Yoon shipping area which is somewhere that I haven't reviewed too many things from so if you are watching from there do give me some brewery recommendations in the uh, the comment section below I'd love to have a look at some more breweries from there but this one is another Småland beer actually a historic province uh, that kind of stretches over the southeastern part of Sweden and um, so for this review then we are going to go to Hook which is a little bit to the south of Yoon Shipping and we're having a taste of my first ever beer from Ulbrigeriet which literally translates into English as the beer brewery um, and this one is at the high five coming in at 4.2 percent and they're describing this as an American wit beer. Now the wit beer of course is a style that originated in Belgium I've never heard specifically though of an American wit beer and um, I'm guessing it will be a little bit more hoppy because they're saying that they've used citra in this one but I've had American wheats I've had American uh, white IPA American Hefeweizens and things, but never specifically an American wit beer. They did have a few other uh, beers from Ulbrigeriet in the Seistenbolaga that I was in, but you know, this is the one that really kind of piqued my interest because it was pretty unusual actually. So here we are, and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one. I always enjoy reviewing beers that are a little bit different and kind of quirky and things like that. So yeah, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All all the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I'll do in the future from Ulbrigeria. The very first time I'm trying one of their beers, as I mentioned. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to, and as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Ulbrigeria, then on to my brewery notes. So as I mentioned to you earlier, this brewery is based in Hook, but they were originally based in Huskvarna, which is out to the east of Ewen Shipping on the edge of Lake Vetter, one of the two great lakes of Sweden along with Venern, if you like. But the company was founded by Marcus Cheddar and his wife Nina, who and they began brewing beers in 2015 under the name Ulbrigeriet, as I said earlier, the beer brewery. But this company was previously known as Croatorpe, and this was also a restaurant. And if you look at the pictures of it, it was one of these kind of uh, almost like maritime type buildings, these kind of cabin type things that you get in Scandinavia, painted red, the kind of wood, uh, almost shed like things actually, a kind of wooden uh, cabin, very very pretty looking actually, but this was a restaurant that they'd run for a number of years. In 2018 though there was apparently a dispute with the local housing association who were the owners of the building and they banned beer brewing on the site and uh, there was a whole thing about a court case and stuff like this but it was eventually settled. So now the beers are brewed and hooked to the south of Yoon Shipping which is where they share a premises with Vestestadens uh, Brewery. Um, as of November 2019, these guys have produced 25 different types of beer and the uh, Crow Torpor restaurant is no longer open. So this company is specifically a beer brewery now from what I gather. It's a little bit of a shame they kind of had that dispute if you like. And I think the, the reason that the restaurant was shut was mainly due to that dispute, if you like. Um, but it's good that Marcus has still been able to uh, continue brewing his beers, if you like. And the article I read on beernews.beernews.se, uh, which is where I get most of the information on these breweries, he was saying that it, he felt a bit of relief, actually, that this matter was kind of fully settled, if you like. So basically, these guys are brewing in Vista Stardom's Brewery in Hook, and uh, they are just kind of focusing on that now. It's a shame because I would have quite liked to have visited their, uh, their restaurant and done a little out and about video with you there because it actually looked quite similar to some of these farm restaurants that you get around Sweden. Now that would be a very cool thing to show you guys on the channel but who knows maybe they'll open up something else in the future we'll just need to see. But yeah like I said these guys have produced 25 or so different types of beer. There's IPAs in there there was a milkshake IPA, some stouts and things as well. So um, yeah you know if you see their beers have a go at them and just see what you think. I'll have a little look and see then we'll lag it as well and see if it is possible to order these nationwide. But I picked this one up as I say because it was a local one when I was in the Yoon shipping 
say stemble like it. it had the little green label next to it which was local or small seek they were calling it um but yeah that's all you really need to know about ulbrig elliot just now i'll put the link to their facebook page in the description below because i think the website is the old one for the crow torpit which i'm not sure is active anymore so i'll put their facebook page down there that you can check out um there's also the links down there, like I say, if you want to learn more about this brewery, you can check that out. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram, and you can also check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages as well to see all the different beers that these guys have done. So, um, yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So, as you can see, this one is in one of these little bottles that Brewski used to use. These very easily recyclable glass bottles, actually. Um, but, yeah, I really I like that. A lot of breweries are kind of changing to cans now because of light, but um, these little stubby bottles are very good when it comes to um, to recyclability and stuff like this. But you can see the artwork on this one is quite distinctive. All of the beers that you'll find from Ulbrich Elliot have a very similar style of artwork. This one looks particularly menacing with all the skulls and things like that. Um, it says here in Smolens, a Smolens Merka Skoger, in Smolens Darkest Forest, we brew this American wit beer. Um, it's got a sort of a fresh dryness I think to it, hot with citra and uh, made and created with love if you like um, basically a, a, th a thirst quencher if you like with a little bit extra in the little brewery we do everything by hand and this all is uh, I think, yeah, they're basically saying that it's hand-bottled as well, which is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, there it says, Ulbrigelli, it's smaller than Sveaia, which you can see just on that little part of the, um, the label there. But there's a plain silver bottle cap on this one. So without further ado then, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste. I'm just going to turn it down because I actually do like it. I prefer it when wet beers have the kind of yeast... Um, kind of infused through them if you like and that is one of the things with these with the whip beer style is that it does tend to sediment quite a little bit and this one is nope it's okay I thought I saw the carbonation and stuff coming up so I thought this beer was maybe going to misbehave but it seems to be okay you always have to be careful with Belgian style beers because they can quite often usually there's bottle fermentation goes on there and you can get massive heads out of these things. Some of them can explode. I've got a little bit of the sediment just on the top of the head there. But as you open this beer up, it actually, the aroma that's coming out of this one really comes across as very lemony and very sherbety. If I was blind, um, you know, if I, if, I, if I was blind tasting this one or smelling this one or whatever, I would probably think there was centennial in there. But you can see on the side of the bottle there, that is some of the sediment that was stuck on the bottom of this one. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, as you can see, this beer has poured a really nice, kind of bright, goldeny straw colour, if you like. If I hold this up to the light, it is a very, very bright kind of yellow. You can see there's little bits of sediment just sitting down on the side of the glass. There was a solid finger of a frothy, I would say perfect white head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But, you know, overall, it doesn't look a million miles away or looks very close to what you would expect from a wit beer. I always remember them being a little bit darker than this to be honest with you but you know this is the kind of color you would expect normally from a wheat beer if i put my fingers behind the glass there you can see that it's a nice hazy um appearance to this beer there's not much light getting through that one it's not as hazy as some of the new england ipas that you're going to come across but not all that far away so um yeah nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance but let's have a closer look at that aroma then and just see how we get on that's um that's kind of interesting actually. So straight away with this beer, you can smell that lovely kind of white bready sort of wheaty kind of thing. It actually comes across as a little bit spicy, almost a little bit kind of coriander like or something. And um, quite often, I mean, Blue Moon is probably the, uh, you know, the, uh, I've probably told you a lie now that I think about it. Blue Moon is the is a, is an American wit beer. Um, but that, um, it really it has that kind of coriander note that you um, that you would normally expect. From a, from a wit beer. I feel like an idiot now. I told you lies that I'd never heard of an American wit beer before. Blue Moon is the obvious example. Duh. Um, but yeah, you can really smell. There's a lot of spiciness to this. A bit coriandery, a bit peppery, something like that. You can smell the nice white, bready, wheaty notes in there also. And there's a little bit of a kind of biscuity sweetness too, which is, um, which is really quite nice actually. I like how the aroma in this one kind of comes together, to be honest with you. That's... Um, 
it, it really is quite a spicy smelling wet beer. This it doesn't smell quite as thick and as yeasty as some of the Belgian ones do, because normally you'd have a bit of a thicker doughy quality to this one. This one smells a little bit more kind of just bready and spicy. Um, but yeah, that's kind of interesting. There's a little bit of a sort of vegetal, earthy kind of thing going on in there. It actually comes across as being a little bit sort of farmhousey, to be honest with you. A um, little bit almost saison-like, to be honest, as well. Um, so yeah, bear that in mind. The aroma of this, the malty, yeasty kind of qualities in this are pretty interesting, actually. On the hoppy side of things, definitely a little bit of earthiness in there. You can also get a nice kind of lighter grassy. This was not too much in the way of a floral quality, but you will notice some of it. I don't think that that is only citra that's in here. I would suspect that they maybe are using uh, another hop as the bittering hop or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised. But then again, the wit beer isn't the um, you know it isn't the the most hoppy beer style that you're going to come across. To be honest, it is more focused on the malt and the and the yeasty side of things. So they could be using just citra on its own. But there's some of the so the, some of the earthy notes that are coming out of this make me think there might be um, a Belgian hop or something in this one as well. Um, on the fruity side of things, um, like I was saying earlier, this beer, it comes across as quite sort of lemony and sherberty, which is what you'd expect. Um, I don't get much of the usual kind of mango thing that you would normally get from Citra, so that's an interesting point to make about this beer. Um, I don't know whether it's been dry hopped with Citra either or whether they've actually added it in the boil. Um, so as I've told you before, the most of your bitterness in beers comes from adding the hops as you reach the boil. But then as you add them, if you add them within the last sort of half hour usually, assuming you're doing a 90 minute boil, that's when you start to get the trade off between bitterness and uh, you know the sort of floral and aroma qualities out of the beer. Or the the um, aroma and flavour qualities, not floral and aroma. I keep misspeaking in this review and it's annoying. Having a few brain farts today. Maybe just getting old right enough. But... Um, yeah, an interesting smell in beer, this one. Take a bit of time to, to enjoy that aroma because, as I say, you don't come across all that many Belgian wits. But let's have a taste of this one then and just see how we get on. This one is the High Five, uh, an American-style wit beer coming in at 4.2% ABV from Ulbrigade in Hook, just a little bit to the south of Jönköping here in Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slange, skull. Yeah, it really comes across as quite, um, it really comes across as kind of quite farmhousey, sort of rustic if that makes sense. It's actually very grainy in its malt base as well. It comes This this beer, it's one that you take in and it really comes across as, as quite dry actually, that's unusual. Yeah, um... It's interesting that I've never, you know, I've not come across a, a beer quite like this one, I have to say. Um, what you're going to notice right away about this one is that the middle of your palate really dries out and it becomes very almost spicy. I think the coriander, I'm pretty sure there is coriander in this beer, it really starts to kind of take over the, the flavour of the beer. Um, but in the hoppiness, you know, the citra notes in this for me, they do start to come out a little bit in the aftertaste, but you've got floral qualities from the hops as well, and it's it's all, it's quite a, it really is quite a dry beer, this one, I have to say. It's one of the driest I've come across in quite a little while, but as I say, it's interesting to review something like this because it is um, a hell of a lot different to the other things that I've tried in recent times. I will need to have a go at their, uh, one of their more kind of normal styles, if we could say that, like one of the IPAs and something like that, and see what this is like, because this is really quite an unusual, quirky beer, to be honest. So yeah, um, let's try and break this flavour down a little bit then. So, middle of your palate, you're going to get that nice um, kind of white bready, wheaty kind of thing. That blankets the middle of your tongue. It actually comes across as a bit more pale malty rather than being thick and wheaty. But what you're going to notice the further you go into the aftertaste with this beer is that really dries out and becomes a little bit peppery and a little bit more sort of coriander spicy the further that you go into that flavour. Um, the, the centre of your palate in this beer is very, very dry. Not dry in the same way as you might get from, say, like a Brut IP or a wine barrel aged beer, but, pardon me, very grainy and dry, I have to say. But overall, um, if you like um, 
a very kind of farmhousey beer. This is one that's going to kind of tick the boxes for you, I think. Um, it's not. It's definitely not a, like a Belgian style wit beer, to be honest with you. It's not quite thick enough to be that. This is a very um, light sort of farmhousey beer. I think that's that. I've repeated that a few times, but that's really what comes to mind with this one. There is a little bit of that kind of vegetally herbal kind of thing going on in the middle of the palate too. If you go right to the back of the tongue, you will get that kind of vegetally herbal kind of quality out of this beer as well. But yeah, it is a very light kind of drinkable thing, I have to say as well. Um, but yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, there is a little bit of earthiness there. As you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, um, it smooths out a little bit. It does become a bit herbal, to be honest, as well, but then at the front corners of the palate, it's a little bit floral and aromatic, and then around the very front curve of the tongue, it's that it's a little bit lighter and more grassy. Then behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that little oily bubble, where those juicy, fruity esters start to come out of the hops. And again, I don't really detect much of the citra, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, with this one... If you go to the back of that oily bowl, maybe there's a teeny little bit of a grapefruity note that's it's kind of mixing in with that sort of spicy graininess that's going on with this beer as well. But as you come further forward from that, you know, there's maybe a teeny bit of a mango or something, which is what you expect from Citra. But then as you reach the front kind of tip of the palate, this one is a little bit more, it really leans a little bit more towards a kind of lemony, citricky type thing. And you can get some lemon and lime qualities out of citra, um, depending on what malts and stuff you mix it with. But citra doesn't really come out in the kind of typical fashion in this beer, I think. Um, this beer, to me, it's quite a, as I say, this is one of the driest and more grainy beers that I've come across in recent times. Um, if you like farmhouse ales, this one is going to tick the box for you in terms of its uh, flavour profile. Um, and for me, it's, you know, the grainy beers, they remind me a, lot, a little bit of the English bitters. So again, maybe if you like English bitters, you might quite enjoy this one. And I, I have to admit, I'm not the greatest fan of English bitters right enough. So this is an interesting one to try, but I have to admit... I don't know if I would drink this beer again because it's it's just not to my taste. A lot of people will kind of quite like this one, I guess. But for me, um, this one, this beer, this particular style, if you like, or this particular beer, it doesn't kind of tick the boxes for me, I have to say. But, um, yeah, the sort of, the lemony, kind of citricky note on the tip of the tongue is nice. And I can see why they would say... This is a thirst quencher, but yeah, this one, it's really spicy, well, not over, it's not madly spicy, but it's got quite a sort of grainy spice to it. It's also got a little bit of that kind of earthy hop kind of thing. If you like English bitters, which as I say is a style I'm not a great fan of, I think you will quite enjoy this one. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, it's quite a light bodied beer. The carbonation is quite crisp in this one. Um, it's got a... You see, it's got quite, it really is quite a wet and crisp mouthfeel to this one generally, quite light bodied as I say. In terms of bitterness with this beer, um, I think you're talking maybe around 30-ish IBUs, something like that. There's a little bit of earthy bitterness there and you've also got a little bit of that spicy note giving you some bitterness to the beer as well actually. But I reckon you're talking about 30 IBUs with this one. Uh, the malt base is quite light. As I say, the middle of your palate really leans towards the kind of spicy, grainy sort of thing and there is a wee bit of that lemony tart citric note to this one. So overall, it's an interesting beer, this one, but I think for my next review, I will pick something that's maybe not quite as uh, as unusual as this. I picked this one mainly because it was um, it was a style that you don't see too much, I have to admit, um, and that, that was the main reason. They did have one or two other things. I think they had their IPA and the Milkshake IPA from them as well, actually, and I was, I was tempted to take the Milkshake IPA, but this one just struck me as being a little bit more unusual, so I might need to see if I can review the Milkshake IPA and see how I get on with that one. But yeah, I have to think, I, I probably won't drink this beer again. Um... But as I don't drink, you know, most of the beers that I review on the channel, I drink once for the kind of tasting factor and that's it. But yeah, if you like your more kind of grainy beers, this is one that's going to tick the boxes for you. But for me, I'm not such a great fan of the kind of grainy beers, actually. But do give me some other um, sort of Belgian wit recommendations and American wit beer recommendations. I still feel like an idiot for telling you that um, I haven't had an American wit beer before because I have had Blue Moon. 
but this was quite an interesting one to review. Cool to introduce you to a new Swedish brewery as well, and I will make sure that I review another beer from these guys. Uh, something that's a little bit more of a kind of regular style, if you like, and hopefully you guys enjoy my take on uh, on that one as well. But yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Ulbe Geriet as well, and you will see me review something else from these guys in the fairly near future. Thank you again for watching, and I will catch you guys very soon. This is the High Five, a 4.2% American wit beer with citra hops in it from Ulbrigeriet and Hook, just to the south of Yoon Shipping here in Sweden. Until the next time, slanger just now, and I'll catch you guys soon. Slanger, skull, cheers.